Hi, my name is Ed Butler and I work for Antarctic New Zealand. I'm the manager for Antarctic Science. And over the past three days in Auckland, I've co-convened a workshop with Vonda Cummins. The workshop was funded by the Foundation, by the Ministry of Science and Innovation in New Zealand. And we had a number of scientists and end users at the conference contributing, or at the workshop, contributing to the workshop. We focus mostly on the Ross Sea region. The Ross Sea region is a large area to the south of New Zealand, about three and a half, four thousand k south of New Zealand. Um, it really is a unique ecosystem in the Ross Sea region. It contains the largest floating ice mass on the planet. Um, every year, the ocean surface freezes up and makes it very difficult to get into um, into the Ross into the Ross Sea region. Um, it's one of the most productive oceans in the world, and I think Sylvia Earle described. Um, the southern oceans, and particularly the Ross Sea region, is the lungs of our planet. Um, if we start messing around with the lungs of our planet, we're going to be in big trouble. The, the Ross Sea also represents a really pristine ecosystem. Um, it's relatively untouched by humans, um, becoming more so now, but it's relatively untouched by humans, and it still has our apex predators, or our top predators, still intact. So we've got most of the cetaceans, the whales, um, still in the Ross Sea region. Um, we've got seals, um, penguins, and the top predator fish in the Ross Sea region. So that's, that's a fantastic opportunity to, to preserve this um, and, and try and make sure that, that we use this, this opportunity to look at one of the last areas in, on, on the planet where these, some of these um, ecosystems really are um, almost in intact, or almost intact. Um, the other reason we need to, I, I believe we need to really focus in on um, the Southern Ocean and Ross Sea region is that Antarctica is one of the most rapidly changing places on our planet. The workshop itself covered what our current state of knowledge was. So what's our current state of knowledge and what are the knowledge gaps? What, what don't we know and what do we really need to know if we want to understand how these ecosystems work and what parts of those ecosystems might be vulnerable? If we can understand that, I think we can go a long way to understanding um, how these ecosystems will respond um, in a changing world. So the, we came to the conclusion very quickly that we just don't have enough data about some of these areas. Um, and we really needed to, to have a more integrated approach to, to collecting some of this data. So frameworks like the long-term ecological research project at um, Palmer in the peninsula, um, those sorts of things are really necessary for other parts. And we, we think they're really necessary for um, the Ross Sea region. And we'll be pursuing an international um, workshop to explore opportunities um, to work together to get towards some of these goals. Um, one of the other things we discussed in the, the workshop um, was exploring the potential for using different protection mechanisms for the Ross Sea region. And we specifically talked about the use of Antarctic specially managed areas, which um, are, are a way of managing um, activities in a particular area. Um, so we know that there are um, tourist vessels, fishing vessels, um, and vessels that support the different international um, Antarctic programs um, operating in the Ross Sea, but there's no one who's really coordinating um, how they're used or coordinating um, and managing um, the, the activities that are occurring in the, in the Ross Sea region. We want to maintain this connection between end users of science and the scientists and try and bring these groups together at least once a year. Um, we will develop a plan for an international workshop to think about ways of collecting data for the Ross Sea region. And one of the first things we want to do is try and identify some easy wins, some things that we can measure relatively easily that are important um, that we can implement within the next 12 odd months um, down in Antarctica. Um, so it was a very productive workshop and I'd, I'd certainly like to thank um, um, all the people that participated, including our international collaborators from the United States and Australia. Thank you.